Hello and welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is our Wednesday video, which today is a tutorial for the circular knitted dishcloth. Now a little history behind this. Uh, this is a, a pattern that Yoko sent, Yoko sent to me. Uh, that's Yoko Shorman Nagel. Um, she sent it to me. She has it on a blog that she does, and I will put her blog information down below in the description box. Um, she sent it to me. She didn't know where the pattern came from originally. She did some modification to it. Um, I did some modification to it as well because I made it just a couple stitches shorter or smaller because it was a, it was about two or three stitches longer or wider. So I changed it a little bit as well. And then in the middle of organizing my craft cave upstairs, I discovered that I had the pattern for it as well. So again, I don't know how old the pattern is or where it originally came from, uh, but these, this is the pattern with the modifications that Yoka put on it as well as the modifications that I added to it. So supplies you are going to need is a ball of 100% cotton worsted weight yarn. Okay, this is Lily Sugar and Cream. One ball you can get at least two dishcloths out of, possibly more. Uh, depends depends on how tight of a knitter you are, but you you will definitely get at least two out of each ball of yarn. You will also need uh, a set of knitting needles, size US 8. Now these are just double pointed needles that I stuck stitch protectors or point protectors on the back. You can use circular needles if you wanted to. You are going to be knitting it straight and then sewing it together to make it go into the round. So you, you don't, you won't be using circular needles in order to knit circularly. Okay. Uh, so you'll need that. You will need a darning needle and a pair of scissors. <laughs> These are my kitchen scissors. I couldn't find my other ones. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is cast on 14 stitches. The original pattern um, called for 16, but I made it a little bit smaller. You can do a long tail cast on, but for this few of stitches, I just do the regular basic beginning uh, cast on. I just make a little slip knot in the end, put my needle in, I go up through the first loop here. You're going to do a basic knitting stitch. Go around the back. And then instead of slipping this stitch off, you're going to put it onto the left needle. And then you're going to knit that stitch. Put it around and lift it on and you're going to continue to do this until you have 14 stitches. You now have the 14 stitches on. Now before we actually begin the pattern we're going to knit back across these 14 stitches. It just helps stabilize this a little bit before we get started. Now we're ready to actually begin the pattern. So the first thing you're going to do is slip the first stitch. Now you want to slip as if to knit, which means you're not coming in from the back. You're coming in from the front on the underside, just like that. And your yarn is in the back and you're just going to slide that stitch onto your right needle and just pull it kind of snug, not tight, but just snug. Now you're going to knit three stitches so there's, so there's one, 
2 and 3. So you have your slipped stitch and three stitches. You're going to now bring the yarn to the front, which means it's going to come in between the two needles. This is going to create what's known as a yarn over, which makes a little hole, an intentional hole. So you're going to pull your yarn between the two needles, and now you're going to knit nine more stitches. This also will add a stitch. You'll see right here when I knit this stitch, I've now increased two stitches here instead of just the one. So there's one extra stitch. Now I've knit two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, and nine. I have one stitch left on my left needle. I'm not going to knit that. I'm going to turn my work, move my yarn to the back, I'm going to slip this first stitch. Now this is Yoka's tip because if you just knitted this stitch, it would create a hole because this is a short row that you're making. So you're going to slip this first stitch just like you did that very beginning stitch. You're going to slip it. And now you're going to knit back across all the rest of the stitches. So we've just created rows one and two. We're going to turn our work. This is row three. So again, you're going to move your yarn to the back, slip the stitch on your first, slip your first stitch, knit three, One, two, and three. We're going to yarn over just like we did before. So bring your yarn between the two needles. And where we knitted down nine stitches last time, this time we're just going to knit eight. So there's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you'll see there's now three stitches left on your needle here. You're going to turn your work, move your yarn to the back, Slip the first stitch, again so you don't create a hole, and knit back across all the way. This is row four.
We'll turn our way, turn our work. And you can see the beginnings of these two yarn overs. Here's the one for row with nine stitches. Here is the little hole that was created from the eight stitches. So we're going to do the same thing again. This time we'll be doing with seven. So we're going to make sure the yarn is in the back. Slip the first stitch. This is row five. Slip the first stitch. Knit three stitches. One, two, three. Bring your yarn to the front and knit seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can see on this left needle, you now have five stitches here. So it's forming almost a pie shape because you'll see it's narrower here compared to here. That's what forms the circle. So we're going to turn our work, move our yarn to the back, slip the first stitch and knit back across. This is row six. We're going to turn our work and we're going to begin row seven. Again, your yarn is in the back. Slip the first stitch. Knit three. Yarn over, so bring your yarn to the front. This time you're going to knit six. So we started with nine, the next row is eight, the next row is seven, this row is six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Turn our work. Move your yarn to the back. Slip the first stitch. And knit back across. Turn your work. Now, if you ever get lost and forget which row you are on, it's very simple to find out. You're just going to count how many yarn overs you have. So you have row with nine stitches, with eight, with seven, and here's the one we just did with six. So we're going to do this one more time. And this time, you guys can probably say the pattern right along with me. We're going to slip the first stitch knit three, one, two, three, 
yarn over, knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this was row nine, row ten. We are going to slip and knit back across. So that was row 10. We're now going to create the little sawtooth edge that makes this look like a little flower. So if you look at this, which is the completed pattern, you can see, you can see where these yarn overs are. Here's row 9, 8, 7, 6, and row 5 is over there. So that's what creates this little design technique. There you can see it really well in this one. There's nine, eight, seven, six, and again, five doesn't show up as much because it's right at the edge. So that's what makes it a little fancier. So let's look at how to create the sawtooth, the sawtooth edge. This is going to be row 11. All right, unlike the other rows where you slipped this first stitch, you're going to begin casting off. You're going to cast off five stitches. So we'll begin by knitting the first stitch. So there is knit. And then we're going to knit a second stitch. Then we're going to use our, the point on our left needle. We're going to pick up that first stitch and we're going to pull it over the top of the second stitch. So this is the second stitch. It's now become the first stitch. So that's cast off number one. We're going to knit the next stitch. And we're going to pull this stitch over top of this one. So I'm going to do this. That is cast off number two. Number three, number four, and number five. Now you should be able to count and there should be, you should be back to 14 stitches. So let's count them together. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and here is your fourteenth stitch. And as you can see, we now have a narrower, a pie shape. There's our yarn overs. You can see them right here. And you can see we've created right here the sawtooth edge. So there you can see them. We're going to knit all the way across at this point. Again, this is still row 11. One. Okay, we've completed row 11. Now you can really look at it. This section here will form the center of your dishcloth. This is the edge. So we're going to turn our work in order to get back where we started 
and this will be row 12, and you're simply going to knit back across all these stitches. There you go. You can see the sawtooth that it has created. There are your yarn overs. There's row 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5. You're going to turn your work and you're going to repeat these same 12 rows So you will have 12 sawtooth edges when you finish. So I'm going to let you do that and then we'll come back for the second portion. I now have all 12 segments all the way around and I'm ready for the very last row before I do the complete bind off. So if you see closely here you'll see that I have a yarn over for row 9, 8, seven, six, and five is right there. So I'm going to do the same as I did for the bind off of the other sections first. So I'm going to complete that last two rows, the five, five stitch bind off and knit to the edge. And then I'm going to come all the way back again. So I'm going to bind off the first five stitches. There's one, two, three, four, And five. There's my five bind off stitches. Now I'm going to knit all the way across, the same as I have before. So I have knit all the way across. I'm going to turn my work. But instead of knitting back across this time, I'm going to actually cast all of these stitches off. I'm going to do it the same way I did this section here. So again, the yarn is in the back. You're going to knit the first one, knit the second one, slip it over top, Knit the next one, slip it over top, knit the next one, slip it over top, and so on until you reach the very last stitch. I have the last stitch on the needle. Now what I'm going to do is make sure I have a fairly long tail, probably about 10 inches. I'm going to clip that. Now I'm going to take this loop and I make it a little bit bigger, get rid of the needle. And I just stick my finger in and give it a couple of twists. And then I'm going to pull this, the tail of the yarn through it like that. And then just pull it snug against the end. There. 
Now, here's what it looks like. Now this long tail comes in handy because we have to join these ends together now. So that's what I'm going to use this for. We're going to use our darning needle and we're going to sew this across here and then I'm going to knot it and then I'm going to pick up stitches around this corner section and draw them real tight and that fills in the hole. So that kind of gives you an overview of what we're about to do. So let's get started. Now when you look at your points here, you want to make sure they're not like this or anything. You want to make sure that they fall in line with how they would be for the, the rest of the segments going around. So you want to make sure that your edge here meets your beginning edge here. And you're just going to pick up loops on each side and go back and forth weaving it together. I'm going to lift this up. You can actually fold it. It's easier for me to hold it and fold it like that and sew it. So again, you're just picking up one loop on each side as you work your way down. I've now worked all the way down and I want to tie this into a little knot so that when I gather here it doesn't cause this to pucker. So I just make one more loop through that last stitch. I don't pull it all the way, I just stick my finger in it, give it a couple of twists, put the needle through, pull it snug. Now I'm going to work my way around these stitches here and then I'll be drawing it tight. I've now gone all the way around and now I'm going to get ready to pull this tight. Just watch the, you'll see the center hole close in and you want to pull it as tightly as you can because you know, you don't want a big hole in the center. So once you get it as tight as you can, you're going to do the same loop that we did before with just pulling through. You can remove your needle. Here's the end. And I'm going to wrap it around my finger a couple times. Put the end through that loop. Pull it snugly. And now I just need to weave in my ends. And it is done. So I hope you've enjoyed our circular knitted dishcloth. There it is. I have not wove my ends in yet, of course. But that is how you do it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Click the little red button down below. If you want the written pattern for this, it is down in the description box. Uh, so you can go over there and check it out. So, um, yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on Saturday.